It wasn't so long ago you didn't need very many fingers to count the different styles of basketball sneakers. And the price, well, you could buy a decent pair of sneakers for under $30. Way under. Alas, those days are long gone. And in their place, a culture where high-priced kicks mean status, power, and sometimes even big-time bucks. Here's ABC's Darren Ravel. Give me money, give me cash. Give me dollars. 16. 16, here you go. That 16, that $1,600. They're called sneakerheads. Like the feeling of Freddy's on your feet? I do like them. You love it. Teens obsessed with shoes. Highest offers a thousand. Running an aftermarket boom of limited edition kicks. Almost $1,400 right now. I'm about to go blow. Every sneaker, a potential for profit. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. At just 15 years old, Alex Asfar is a master negotiator. 350 was my rock bottom. Yo. 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Meet Brandon Buscanera. See how cheap that is? He's 12. So far, he's made a hundred bucks today. For the love of the game, it's a cycle. Buy, sell, trade. It's kind of a hobby, addiction. It's more of an addiction. Kids like Alex and Brandon are buying and selling sneakers priced in the thousands, all with their own money. Alex, we got like five grand between the two of us. Money's got to be the shoe. It all started with Michael Jordan, when Nike convinced us Air Jordans could make us fly. Having them on your feet was a status symbol. I fell in love with him. To some, worth whatever price it took, including murder. In 1989, one boy was strangled for his Jordans. Another one was shot. The story hit the cover of Sports Illustrated. Rising. Since then, the size of the athletic shoe market has more than doubled to $21 billion a year in the United States alone. It's 6 a.m. on a Saturday. Alex isn't an early riser. Neither is his dad. Nonetheless, they're on the way to a sneaker convention in New York City. Too early in the morning to be doing this. <laughs> Shows I really care. After packing his shoes in the car, Whew. they pick up his friend and fellow sneakerhead, Brian. They don't waste any time. That's amazing. The conversation immediately turns to shoes. Brian, my Yeezys for these and 150. Killing me. Translation, Brian just scored a pair of rare Nike Dornbeckers online for $640, and Alex is immediately trying to buy them. Let's just say 700 You paid 640 so your DB's and 150 This banter continues for the hour-long car ride until they arrive. You good? Yeah, I'm good. The two get to work setting up shop at a table they paid for with some friends, and soon it's on. Everything's gotta be perfect. First up are the glow-in-the-dark signature shoes of NBA star LeBron James. Alex paid $250 for them. I started at $350. $330, I'll do it right now. No, I, I, got, I got it at $340. Are we gonna lose a deal over 10 bucks? Now watch what happens as this yeah. deal unfolds. Do it, 20? Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. Yeah, I'll do that. While Alex was in the middle of one deal, he closes another. 340? All right, 340. Deal. 340. All good. All right, let me get you situated. Two deals at once. I don't know how that happened, but it just did. And uh, I got to go count this because I'm really nervous right now. Only a privileged few. Yeah, yeah, and it's, you know, by, like I said, by appointment. But in the world of sneakerheads, this guy is the president. He calls himself DJ Clark Kent, and he owns at least 2,500 pairs. Thank you. He started buying and selling shoes more than three decades ago. Tell me the difference between the kids today versus what you were doing 35 years ago. These kids today don't seem like they want the shoes. They want the thing that goes along with having the shoes. Somebody figured out that there's money for a pair of sneakers because of this hype. The hype is generated by Nike, which denied Nightline's request to talk about its strategy. For prize sneakers, they make a limited supply, driving up the aftermarket price tag. How much you offering? $6.90. All right. Demand got out of control. Kids were camping out in front of shoe stores, much like this episode of HBO's Entourage. I don't get it. All these people are online for sneakers? Oh, yeah. Some of them probably even camped out all night for sneakers. 
Vince, these ain't just sneakers. These are limited edition Fuki Jamas. Fuki what is? In some cities, they were breaking down doors, rioting. Some were even arrested. If someone gets hurt in front of a Nike store, you're gonna blame Nike. You can't get hurt clicking a button. Nike had to rethink its strategy. Today, its hottest shoes are sold online. It's a little before 8 a.m. on Saturday again, back in Alex's home in Middletown, New Jersey. Today, Alex wants Air Jordan 11 lows. So he opens up several web pages for online stores that will sell them in hopes of getting one pair. Two, one, go. There was error. an error. There you go, that happens, right? Yeah, I opened, what, seven pages and everyone tells me that they're sold out. And what was that, five seconds? My favorite pair of shoes that I wear are probably these, and they're not even expensive. Alex's father, John, estimates his son spends roughly eight hours a day thinking and talking about sneakers. As a parent, what do you, what do you grapple with? He should spend more time with schoolwork and things like that, because his mom, we could be watching a movie together. He could be doing homework and the phone will buzz and he'll look and it'll be about sneakers. I'm like, don't you have a test tomorrow? But it's not all bad. I've also seen where he really, really shows that he's learning something is not the deals he makes, the deals that he walks away from. Came here with $1,300, now I'm carrying over three grand. It's like a brick. From what I sold today, I can buy five amazing shoes and still go home with more money than I came. Back at the show, Alex is ready to splurge. How much? 1075 Can I buy those? Yep. $1,075 for a pair of Louis Vuitton anthracites designed by Kanye West. Previously worn by, well, who knows. With so much money at stake, it's clear there is a dark side to all of this. Counterfeits and theft can be part of the hustle. They're fake? Yeah. Way discoloration. These are off. Steven! Yo, he's downstairs by the raffles. And while Brian went to lunch, someone stole a pair of his shoes worth $400. It's not very nice. I miss my shoes. As the show wraps up, Alex prepares for one more deal. His father's deceased military. I have my military ID. Alex hasn't quite dealt with a negotiation like this. I feel bad, so I'm going to do it. I mean, let's just do it right now. Thank you. You're welcome. His buyer walks away thinking he got a steal, but Alex yeah. actually had plenty of wiggle room. The least I would have taken, like 540 even, so I just made an extra 100 bucks. One of the most important things that can happen for the shoe game is for kids to say, I'm not gonna let you charge me too much for these shoes. That will never happen. But that's what has to happen. It's just always some crazy hype for something that's coming out on Saturday. And then you know what happens? Next Saturday comes. What's up, Josh? It's Saturday again. Alex waits in line for nearly two hours at his hometown sneaker boutique. Here they are. He finally snags a pair of camo foam posits that he couldn't score online. All right, quality day. For Nightline, I'm Darren Ravel in New York City.